Tottenham get battered everywhere they go, everywhere they go. Yes, guys, welcome back, welcome back. Big up to everybody that's locked in. Yet again, yet again, we have dunked on Tottenham. Yet again, we have embarrassed Tottenham. Yet again, we are the final nail in their Champions League hopes. Take it back to 2012, people. This time, we have officially confirmed that they will not be in the Champions League next season. Hold that. If we can't be in the UCL, neither will you. Neither will you, mate. We've battered them again. We've humiliated them again. Aggregate score of 6-1. And we were the better team from the start. There's no questions. There's no ifs, no buts this time. There's no... We were down to nine men. We were we were down to nine men. You, you We will beat you 11 on 11. We beat you 11 v 11. You disgrace. You disgrace. I don't think I've ever come to a Chelsea Tottenham game with less confidence. And thank you. Thank you, Chelsea, for reminding me that when this fixture comes around, Chelsea come around. And Tottenham, they disappear. The same way they always do. As soon as they see Stamford Bridge, as soon as they see Stamford Bridge, their head goes. They start peeing their pants and all sorts. And it happened again. It happened again. From minute one, we were the better team. From minute one. And no one can tell me different. No one can tell me different. Because Spurs came and all they did was try spamming crosses from the right. To, and it never led to anything. It was even more crazy that they didn't try target Gilchrist more than they could have. But the times they did, Gilchrist was on to them. Son, dead ass, failed the Gilchrist test. He failed. You got a U. You got an F. You, you failed. They had to put him to the center in the second half because he just couldn't find a way through on the left-hand side. You at your age. You are, you are diving against Gilchrist. You disgrace. You are an absolute disgrace to your shirt. Actually, no, you are not a disgrace to your shirt because that's everything Tottenham is about. Bottling. Straight bottle jobs, left, right, and center, all over the park, even off the bench. Madders. What did Madders do? He had like one flick the whole game and it led to nothing. The rest was just dispossessions and spammed crosses into no one. What about the Howard Wolowitz reject Brian Gill? What the hell did he do? How did these men get dominated by a starting eleven? That has to play every game by default because there's nobody left. By a bench of under 21s, players I've never heard of in my life. Shout out to the team, man. Because they defended resolutely when they needed to. They attacked with force. They made chances. We scored off a set piece. Which also, I have to, I have to say as well, Tottenham might be the only team in the league worse than we are when it comes to set pieces. Maybe Hussam was right. Maybe I've got to give credit to Hussam for one thing, and it's not for Poch. Before you say anything, it's not for Poch, but for Tottenham. For Tottenham, maybe he's got to get his credit for that one because they are imposters. How they've been fifth or around top four for this long is a disgrace. The fact that we're nine points behind them shows how washed this league is. How with our inconsistent selves are they nine points away from us? Wow. Wow, this league is, is done out. Somehow, this club has reeled me right back into believing we have a chance of getting back into Europe. In terms of finishing above Spurs, I don't know. I don't know. Like, nine points is still a lot to ask for. I know they're facing Spurs and Liverpool, but they're also facing Burnley and Sheffield. And actually, no, to be fair, from our experience, Burnley at home, Sheffield United away. Let me not say nothing about them fixtures. Let me not say nothing. But we also have to win four in a row to do that. Hmm. Yeah, X to doubt on that one. So like, let's just try and look at sixth and seventh. Let's try and look at sixth and seventh. But let's talk about the players because Trevor Chalaber, man, if there's any player that I would like to see us keep, it would be him out of all the Cobham graduates because he's actually been there through the good times. He's actually got the experience of playing under Tuchel and playing under absolute ballers across the pitch. Except the attack. Except the attack. But the point still stands. 
I would rather keep him for his experience and his consistency that he gives you. It looks like Trevor Chalaba from last season all over again. You remember the amount of praise I was giving him last season. I was saying he was our best centre-back at certain points. Um, Badi Ashil, another good performance. Kukurella, I've been telling people for so long that this guy is clear of Ben Chilwell. He offers me so much more than Ben Chilwell. And thank goodness that Pochettino finally inverted him again and he stopped playing him out wide like he was doing in pre um, through the whole season. We had Cucurella inverting in preseason and we cooked. Now, it's taking about 10 months, but we finally got there. <laughs> thank goodness. Thank goodness. Caicedo and Gallagher did, a, did well in the pivot again. Gallagher had to have a good performance as well with that banner coming out. Otherwise, he would have been absolutely flamed by sections of the match going... Well, not match going fans. Who am I kidding? Sections of the fan base. Mudrick started slow, then really kicked into life. There was some really good passing from him. Palmer and Noni dominating. Dominating the right-hand side. Noni will just keep driving at you. He will keep driving at you and he'll keep driving at you and he will keep driving at you. He is so direct in the way that he plays. Jackson, hold up play. Superb. Superb. Unlucky not to get a goal in the first half. Van der Ven clears it off the line. Um, but he gets one off the second just off good awareness. Fair play to you, man. 19 GNA for the season for him. Speaking of the bench, Akipong came on, locked down the right side. What a debut for him, man. What a debut. I think he made more blocks than anyone else in the Chelsea and Tottenham team combined. You can't ask for much more than that. And now, we've done the double over Tottenham. We moved to West Ham. We need to get revenge against them. And then hopefully, hopefully results go our way. Palace, do me a favour. Because if we beat West Ham, we open up a gap on them. And then, if Palace can do me a win, do us a real favour, we might finally, finally go above Manchester United in the table. <laughs> the fact that it's going to take to nearly mid-May to get there is crazy even by itself. But, uh, if we can do that, we might end the season on a little bit of a high. We won't be telling Pochettino to get the hell out of my club. We might open the door for Pochettino and say, you know what, thank you for your services, mate. There you go. There you go. There's the door. See yourself out. We're not swearing at you this time, but just please leave. Please leave. So we will see. We will see. Lots to be done over the next few weeks, but suddenly we're not back on the beach anymore. Suddenly we've just done the Undertaker and sat up. So we'll see what happens over the next few weeks. But yo, big up to everybody that's locked in. What a win. Tottenham get battered. If you're a Tottenham fan watching this, hold. Nicholas Jackson owns your football club. And as always, up the Chelsea. We're still potch out. Still potch out.